Wow, guys, welcome back to the studio. Ryan, aka Bloodshot Airbrushing, and we are back in the Cobra Reaper tutorial. I know you guys were here for the last video where we tackled some stenciling. Well, I know a lot of you are asking, what do we do with those stencils? So let's get right on into that. Now, this gas tank, guys, is a metallic black, so it's black with a bit of a uh, metal flake over top um pearl maybe it's a pearl no it's too big of a metal flake so the real difference between pearls and metal flakes for those of you who are wondering and the reason why I had to kind of look and decide is the size of the metal flakes um a lot of metal flakes can get really big uh example alright come here punk so that is a giant metal flake. It actually doesn't get any bigger than that. Versus a pearl, which would be like my wolf helmet. Um, don't know if you guys saw that video. We'll do a link right there. But if you, uh, if you remember this one, this is a pearl base. So if you look at that blue in the background behind everything, that is a pearl. So it's got a real cool shine to it, but you don't really see the metal flake. And what we got over here, guys, I'll wet down the tank so you can see, because uh, otherwise it's sanded and it has a very dull finish. And this is just a alcohol solution. But now you can kind of see that uh, metal flake. It's tiny. It's a teeny tiny metal flake. But beautiful. Alright guys, I'm going to flip you on over, slap you on into the tripod, and we're going to get rolling on this beast and knock out some stenciling. And I'm just going to kind of do what I do, guys. I hope you get a little something out of this. So let's get right on to it. Check it. Alright guys, before we get too far, I thought I'd do a quick rundown of the tools I'll be using today. Alright, I got a paintbrush for my lights, a paintbrush for my darks, I've got my X-Acto knife and my trusty cutting board in case I have any hang-ups with the stencils. I've got my opaque black and my opaque white, which has already been thinned out into a handy little eyedropper bottle. Stack of magnets, which will hold my stencils to the gas tank. Um, my cleaning solution, which is fantastic, mixed with water, H2O, keep the body hydrated, um, and that's kind of it, shot glass filled with, uh, cleaner to keep the brushes clean, and my stencils, so you guys probably saw a bunch of these from the last video, stencil for the skull and stuff, alright, we're gonna get right into this, now being as this is a metallic base, and I don't want his robe to be metallic, I want it to be black. So we're going to have to go in and do some fill-in. So I'm going to be using my outline, what I would call the negative, alright? Always call the cutout part the positive. And then I call the outline the negative. So I'm going to use these negatives of what I've got here. This one's going to be in multiple pieces. And the snake, and I'm going to have to piece together the body, because this one is a wraparound, okay guys, which is kind of cool. Um, typically you're measuring from one side to the other. For this one, guys, I just got to make sure that it's balanced from one side to the other. And it makes it a little easier, so we're going to get these stencils. And now, it's such a huge image wrapping around the entire tank, so we had to use multiple pieces of paper, but we're going to slap these on here. Do some placement. I've also got this guy which sits right in the middle here to make sure that I don't go too far with my images. I don't want anything to be covered. And guys, check it out. And first things first guys, be sure to give it a good cleaning. I, uh, I like to use one of two things. Sometimes I use both. Uh, grease and wax remover, also known as a silicone remover, or my fantastic cleaning solution, guys. 
So what I'm doing here, as you can see, is I am mapping out my outline. I decided to uh, do the snake secondary as that body still needs to be sort of uh, figured out how it's coming off the staff and making its way down the tank. So here you go, guys. Mixing up some black, thinning it out a little bit to relieve myself of that dot pattern that you typically get with a black. And just blasting her on in, guys. Um, no real uh, method. I know there's a 50-50 rule where I'm still overlapping my previous pass by about 50%. But when we get down to the edge of this gas tank, guys, I'm blending it out. I want that black to fade into our base, which has that metal flake in it. That little metal flake. And I'm going to take this opportunity here, guys, because I seem to always neglect. I'm running two brushes pretty much interchangeably, guys. I've got my Iwata HPC Plus and my Iwata HPB Plus. Main difference is cup size, needle size, but I pretty much run them interchangeably. And without the housing for the back, they're just your standard HPC and HPB. There's no uh, trigger restriction. I run them as a standard. And here, guys, as my stencil folds around a double curve, sometimes it doesn't lay flat. So I fold these little stencils so it can lay as flat as possible. And then a little bit of tape to hold down that fold. And as you see me going forward, guys, I use my X-Acto knife. Sometimes the magnets just aren't enough to hold down the stencil. So sometimes I'll use my X-Acto knife, just kind of hold it. Uh, you can use your fingers if you want to, guys. Me, personally, I hate getting paint all over my fingers. So you saw that little black line that I sort of sprayed there, guys. That was so I didn't put any black past that line. I didn't want to have, uh, well, a stencil line on that body that doesn't exist. So I let that trail out into nothing. And now I'm going in with my French Curve stencils, guys. I'm just going to build up the remainder of this body. Easy breezy guys, take your time, no need to rush, make sure those curves are where you want them. It's like so. And I'm gonna take this opportunity guys, just to reiterate, this step of me going in with black is really only because I've got a metallic face. I've got a black cobra to paint, I've got a reaper which is predominantly a black robe. Um, usually I would kind of go in and I would just kind of map out my whites over top of a black base. But again, metallics kind of throw things off a little bit and I want to save as much of that metallic as possible and still have a difference between the shades of the black and the metallic black. So, this is how I do guys, building it up with a little bit of black to get rid of that Sparkle. <laughs> All right. Now is when I'm going in with my typical stage, guys. Now I've got the black based up. I'm just going in with a thinned out white. And for this, guys, I'm not blasting it all in. I'm uh, loosely mapping out where my shapes are. Again, I've done quite a few skulls, so you get a bit of a feel. Um, and keeping in mind where my light source is in relation to my skull. So this guy's going to kind of have a front front light source that's going to light up him and let the edges of the skull sort of fade into black. And then we've got a shadow from a cloak. So even at this early of a stage, guys, you're sort of mapping it out and, you know, building it up, getting an understanding of where your highlights are going to be and, uh, Oops, yeah, you yeah, see that little uh, ghost there from my stencil where the white fell over that edge and gave me a line. And clean that stuff pronto, guys, as soon as you see it. Don't waste no time and make the appropriate adjustments, guys. Learn from your mistakes. Not like this isn't the millionth time I've done something like that, but <laughs> let my let my error be a lesson to you. Um, I sometimes get a little bit... Uh, focused on speed and even right now with me holding the stencil down rather than slapping a couple magnets on there guys this is just in the name of speed yeah this might not be the best way to do it guys you might be better off taping her down or slapping out a couple magnets like so 
and this will hold her down so that you can, uh, even if you do have to one-handed spray, you got your other hand to hold down some of these stencils that can easily get blown up from your air being pushed down. Sometimes that will push the stencil up and it won't give you the nicest line. So this is why I tend to kind of get in there with uh, my X-Acto knife just to hold down some of those, some of those areas. And again, guys, my goal here is not to get this as bright white as possible. It's actually nice to uh, save it so that you can go back in and punch your brightest highlights after the fact. So this is just me mapping everything out, man. Getting in some white so that all my other tones have something to build off of. Being sure to build it up slowly so I kind of get an idea of the form as I go. And this is how I do, guys. I hope you can learn a little something from this. I hope this shows you how really simple it is. Um, not a lot of time goes into this stage. You're really spending the majority of your time making sure that these stencils are lined up, that they are exactly where you want them. Um, here I am using my hand as a stencil. Um, again, realizing that that edge of that photocopy paper is pretty close to where I'm spraying my white and I don't want to get another ghost line. So my hand is now working as a preventative measure. <laughs> <laughs> and I know the guy who just said he hates getting paint all over his fingers is now coating the palm of his hand in white. And I also know how much of an oxymoron it is. Uh, contradiction in terms. Being an artist who hates being covered in paint. But uh, yeah, I'm also OCD. So there's that. <laughs> and guys... As I was building up that white nice and bright, um, this playing card is basically a virtually white piece of paper. So I did want that nice and bright, and in the process, guys, I got what I call a little bit of underspray. Uh, a little bit of a ghosting on that edge, where instead of a nice, solid edge, we are left with a haze like you are staring at it through a pair of beer goggles. And that ain't gonna cut it, guys. So, as you see, I'm actually just using my fingers as a little bit of an eraser. And a little bit of saliva goes a long way. <laughs> yeah, I know it's kind of gross, but that's how I do. How I've always done. In the name of speed, I just use the quickest water source available. <laughs> gross. <laughs> Alright, guys. And, uh... Here I am using my alcohol solution. This is actually a grease and wax remover or also known as a silicone remover. And as it's an alcohol, it doesn't really affect the paint. Now, if you get that too wet and you start wiping it down, it will wipe off the paint. Um, if you have a very, very thin layer of paint put on there and you wipe it with anything, really, it's going to take off a little bit of that paint. So just be cautious, be careful, but it's a great way to see what it's going to look like with a clear coat and I can see if there's any hazes left behind and I can make sure that they are all gone before I proceed. A little tip for the brain box and proceed we shall. So now I've got the four fingers, the fingers that are in the foreground, they are all sprayed so now I'm just going in with a little bit of a more transparent white, a little bit more thinned out and doing the back half of that hand and giving some just a little bit of a highlight to the snake and there's a reason why the snake is very light and I'm not going in with a lot of white on there and we will elaborate in a later video but it's a pretty cool effect to get some snake skin quick and easy so stay tuned for that one guys and the staff of the stickle Sickle, scythe, I don't know what you call it, I don't know what the difference is, but uh, it's a big sharp blade, usually used for cutting grass and wheat, I'm not sure why Death has it, maybe he was a farmer before he became the collector of souls, oh, maybe he was a uh, cultivator, uh, cultivating of souls, Re Reaper, 
he's reaping the field. Yeah, I don't know, guys. Your guess is as good as mine. But just a little bit more real time for you, just to see how I get this done. And slow and steady is how she's won. Alright, guys. Just building up some of the highlights for this little serpent. Trying to make him look like he's coming right off that staff and kind of striking at you. And then building up just a few little highlights for the cloak. I know it's so transparent that you're really not seeing the paint that I'm laying down. But it is there. And you're just going to have to take my word for it, guys. And really all I'm doing is just building up a little bit of a base. So once I bring in my dark stencils... Well, they've got something to go over top of. If it was dark over top of dark, then you really wouldn't be mapping out anything, would you? Nope. Nope, you wouldn't. Alright guys, and now on to the sickle. I've got some wood grain to do at the base of it. So I'm going to kind of hit this a little bit more linear with lines. And then once I get into the metal of the blade, well, that's going to be again nice and bright. This is kind of why I masked off this area. And even going as far as to skirt the rest of it with masking paper so I don't get any overspray because I know I'm going to be building up a bit of paint here guys and this is a thicker white you can kind of see a little bit of a dot pattern coming through but I'm not so concerned at this point because again guys just building this up nice and bright guys nice and bright this will give me some nice baseline so i can get some nice reflection tones off of this metal and again guys even though i'm building up nice and bright i am still working out the form of it i am working out those highlights as i go so it's a constant evolution you're just constantly building it up but this allows you to make a few mistakes as you go and be like maybe that line isn't where i want it let's make a couple quick changes and that's how I do, guys. And now, speaking of mistakes and changes. Ah, that staff should be going behind the shoulder. And right now, it's kind of going into the cloak, and it can't do that, so we got to fix it. All right, guys, that is the next step. And for me to do so, I'm going to spray a quick edge onto a random piece of paper that I got kicking around. And using that, I'm going to build a brand new edge that works better with <laughs> where those two stencils meet. It wasn't a perfect join. And I knew that this might be an issue. Same sort of thing that happened where the snake met the staff, guys. It wasn't perfect, so it had to be sorted out. And this is how I do. Putting some masking tape on there to avoid going too far with the cleaning process. Going back in with some sandpaper and then going back in with my grease and wax remover solution just to make sure that I got rid of all that I need to get rid of. Oh yeah. Clean her off guys, blow her down, give her some air, masking it off with some stencils just so that I can keep those nice areas white. Don't want to chase my tail on everything. And now I'm going back in with black. Not that you can see it with this horrible angle, but back in with black, and I'm going to eventually have a white silver glow around the entire cloak. So I'm just building some of that up right now. Again, just to make sure that this problem is addressed, I'm happy with it, and I don't need to uh, make any further changes. And as you see, I did. That staff still needed to have a solid edge. So bringing that back up. And now, once again, with the cloak to make it look like the staff is going in behind. So back in with some darks. And it's kind of a back and forth, guys. This is how I do my black and whites. Back and forth with a lot of black and whites. And now I got black in the brush, guys. I'm going to use this stencil. But I am only going to spray my darkest areas. Inside the nose, inside the eye sockets beneath the cheekbones, in between the teeth, the upper and lower jaw, and beneath the jaw, guys. Not going to do all my other little details. Not with black. It's a little too harsh. Um, but wherever I got some dark areas, dark shadows, I'm okay with it. 
and now I cut a couple registry lines as I was pointing out there so I knew exactly where this card lines up and bring in a couple little A's A and the spade ace of spades oh yeah Lemmy would be proud <laughs> and guys building that nice and dark making sure I get a nice solid black for these areas again playing card it's printed it's black and white man so not going with too many tone differences just black and white all right i've cleaned out the black guys and now i've got my sort of gray mixture that i use with uh blue purple brown um for the skull i'm kind of going a little more on the brown side so my typical mixture is about five drops brown one drop blue one drop purple with this one i'm using about eight drops of brown and it's just going to give me a little bit more of a weathered sort of bone look rather than an ivory sort of bone look. And guys, you can play with your own colors, but I've just found this makes a nice softer transition. Me blowing out some of the parts of the stencil that never actually got removed when I cut it. And uh, notice that I'm not hitting any of these areas real heavy. I'm only using the stencil as a way to map out all my lines. Now that I've got the layers, I can go and I can deepen that lower jaw to make it really look like it is going in behind. And now we don't want to oversaturate that, guys. We don't want to, like, blacken it out so it just disappears. There will still be some light being cast upon that, but just enough so that it does show that that is going in behind. And on to the next one, guys. Same sort of deal, just mapping out where my darks are for the hands. Keeping in mind that some areas are darker than others. Right in these areas, guys, this is almost black because that's where the hands are going back in behind. But on the top surfaces, I'm not going to hit that as dark as I can because it is just mapping out where my shadows are. That's all. Same with the snake guys, really all this is doing is mapping out the difference between the belly and the scales. Taking my time and building it up in light layers, building it up slowly. And guys, we're just going to move on to this other hand and just boogie on through it. Once you've seen the skull, once you've seen the other fist, I think you get the gist. Rock and roll, guys. What do you think? It ain't that hard, guys. It's just a matter of taking your time, building up slowly, being very conscientious of where you're putting down your paint, and doing a nice light layer so that should you need to make any corrections, it's not the end of the world. And again, just blowing out a couple more little pieces that never got removed. And this is it, guys. This is going to map out everything I need for this snake. And then the rest is just a matter of doing highlights and shadows. This is how I do, guys. And this is why I love stencils, man. It makes my job so much easier. It takes away a lot of the guesswork, guys. You know, you spent that time on the drawing. You spent that time figuring out where it all goes. That's not a waste of time, guys. That's all put into your stencil, and now it's just a matter of putting it down in paint. Oh, yeah. And as I put up the final little touches on this stencil, just darkening up the little areas in the mouth, feel free to drop me any questions, guys, if you're still a little bit lost and this hasn't really sunken in. That's fine, man. It's taken me years to achieve this knowledge, so feel free. Drop me a line if there's anything I can help you with. I'm happy to be of service. All right, guys. And this is just um, the teeth, the eyeballs, and you see me cut out a little bit of registration lines because I couldn't see where that snake was. Ah, oh, yeah, guys. Just to start. This is just the beginning. In the next video, guys, I will show you... Oh, oh, do you see what I see? <laughs> Error. Yeah, no, we're going to have to fix that before we go any further. 
and uh, what happened was the stencil shifted. So it wasn't exactly where I needed it. I'm just going to double check over the rest of this piece to make sure it is all beautiful and there's nothing else that needs to be corrected. No, I think we're good. I think we're good. We just got to go in with my Q-tip and, yeah, the wonderful world of saliva. <laughs> the plentiful water source that it is. Uh, just a little bit on that end of that Q-tip, guys. Don't go crazy. You're not dripping that thing. And then going back in with the tip of that stencil to bring that white back up. Uh, the only reason why I was taking that black down is I don't want that black to come back through with the clear coat process. And then you're like, yeah, I covered that. But then you get a little ghosting of it. So just take it down. Get rid of it. That's my suggestion. And then you can go back. Bring up those darks again. Double check your stencil as you will see me do right here. Make sure. Make sure it is where it is because... Sometimes things move, man. Triple check if you need to. <laughs> That's right, Ryan. That's right. All right, guys. Just going to wrap up the last little bit of this. And that should take care of that. All right, guys. And in the next video, we will start blending out some of these stencil lines and really start bringing in those three dimensions. All right, guys. So there you have it. That is the stencils laid out and ready to be blended. We will tackle this in the next video, guys. Keeping these relatively short. It's a lot of information to get out. So we're just gonna wrap this one up at that. And I hope you guys learned something. I know you did. And until next time, guys, like, follow, subscribe. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Cheers. Oh, somebody wants to say hi. Somebody wanted to say hi. <laughs> and the library of videos just keeps on growing, guys. If you haven't, be sure to check out those as well.